welcome to Zemchem. Now today's video is on stereochemistry and this is the new topic in the channel for BSc first year syllabus. Now this chapter requires lots of imagination and concentration. So be careful about every little things which are being done. Now before starting if you have not watched the previous videos on organic chemistry you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. Now here we will deal with basic introduction to stereoisomerism, optical activity, optical rotation and specific rotation. Now first, what is stereochemistry? Now stereochemistry refers to the chemistry in space and is described as a function of molecular geometry. That is, it is basically the part of chemistry which studies the structure in three dimensions. Okay. Now, one of the characteristics of the stereochemistry, that is this one, is that existence of stereoisomerism for some compounds. Now, let us concentrate on the term isomer. Now, what do we mean by isomer? We definitely know that isomers are the different compounds with same molecular formula. For example, if we concentrate on this example, see this, C6H12. Though it has same molecular formula, but the structure can be two different. Now, if we concentrate on the term, whole term, which is the stereoisomerism, then what do we mean by stereoisomers? These are the isomers with same bonding connectivity, but different special arrangements of atoms and group. So, what do we mean by that? Let us see. Suppose, if we consider for 1,3-dimethylcyclobutane. don't have any idea about how to name it that is about the nomenclature you can see the IUPAC nomenclature series I will give the link in the description box as well as the I button present above this video now see here we can see two chiral centers now what do we mean by chiral center it is a tetrahedral atom in a molecule bearing four different ligands that is if we see here carbon has hydrogen one CH3 one this total group and another this total group so this is a chiral center, right? So it has four different kinds of groups attached to it. Now the two stereoisomeric forms are when these two CH3s are present towards us and when this one CH3 is towards us and another CH3 is below the plane. That is if we consider this screen as a plane then in this case the two CH3s are above the plane and two hydrogens are below the plane whereas in this case one CH3 is above the plane and another is down the plane which is present here. Now this concept is already being explained in the organic chemistry part 1 video where we have dealt with flying wedge projection. So we can name it as cis and here it is trans. Now two stereoisomers are actually different molecules. One cannot be converted to the other without breaking a bond somewhere and then reforming elsewhere. Now thus we can say that they have different configurations. Now we will see optical activity. One of the most important property of a stereoisomer is the optical activity. Now what does it mean? The ability of the substance to rotate the plane of polarized light is known as optical activity. Now Stereoisomers are related to the particular physical properties of which one is optical activity. Now the optical activity is defined as the ability to rotate the plane of polarized light. Now what is polarized light must be clear before understanding what is optical activity. So polarized light is the light whose vibration takes place only in one plane. Now light actually possesses certain properties that are best understood by considering the wave phenomena right in which vibrations are mutually perpendicular for electric field and magnetic field we have seen that how light waves propagate that is there is two types of waves mutually perpendicular to each other that is if electric field waves goes like this then the magnetic field goes like this in the plane perpendicular to it so when these are being resolved that is there is vibration in only one of those planes then it is called plane polarized light so if we see this is the source of planes through which vibration is occurring but when it is polarized it is a 
one way vibration right now optical active substance is one that rotates the plane polarized light that is when polarized light vibrating in a certain plane is passed through an optically polarized that is optically active substance it emerges vibrating in different plane now the main question is how can this rotation of plane of polarization that is optical activity be detected actually it is not only detected but amount of rotation is also being observed using an instrument known as polarimeter so if we concentrate on this diagram this is the polarimeter it can be represented by this figure now it consists of a light source two lenses that is one is polaroid or it can be made of nickel and between the lenses there is a tube placed here and this tube is known as polarimeter tube and contains solution of substance which is to be studied for optical activity now these are arranged so that light passes through one of the lenses which is known as the polarizer then the polarimeter tube and then the second lens which is known as the analyzer that is this one and finally reaches our eye when the tube is empty or only filled with the solvent that is this tube we find that the maximum amount of light reaches our eye through this two lenses and here we can observe obviously this is the zero position of the instrument now if we rotate the lens that is nearer our eye that is this one that is analyzer then we find that light dims and reaches a minimum when the lens is at right angles to the previous position in this connection it is important to mention that it is easier to detect a minimum than a maximum the principle remains the same now we have to place the solution of the sample to be tested in this tube and if the sample does not affect the plane of polarization light transmission is still at maximum that is if there is no rotation of plane polarized light there is no optical activity and no deflection right and the substance is known as optically inactive now if on the other hand substance rotates the plane of polarization then the analyzer must be rotated to confirm with this new plane if the light transmission is again to be a maximum so what does it mean that if this one causes some rotation then this analyzer should be also rotated with that angle only to cause a maximum observation and this substance is known as optically active substance now see dextrorotatory means that if the rotation of plane of polarization which we have seen and the rotation of lens is towards the right side then the substance is called dextrorotatory and symbol is given by plus okay and now we will see the lever rotatory if the rotation of the plane of polarization and the rotation of lens is towards left then the substance is called lever rotatory and the symbol is given by minus sign now this is important now we will see what is optical rotation in perfection now the amount of rotation that occurs in plane of polarized light due to optical active substance is called optical rotation now we have understood why this rotation occurs and what is optical rotation now this is the number of degrees through which the lens must be rotated to conform to light that is to get maximum light towards our eye now factors on which optical rotation depends is that it is directly proportional to the concentration of optically active substance that is higher the concentration higher is the magnitude of optical rotation now length of the polarimeter tube is also directly proportional higher the length of the polarimeter tube higher is the magnitude of the optical rotation and the last point is nature of substance temperature of the medium and wavelength used now we will deal with optical rotation alpha now we have seen that alpha is proportional to c right into l now what is l l is the length of the polarimeter tube in deci meter always remember l is given in deci meter now if we write the perfect 
formula for optical rotation which is given by alpha then alpha is equal to a constant now t degree celsius where temperature is kept constant into c into l now always remember what are the parameters this is optical rotation this is concentration and its unit is gram per ml and this is polarimeter tube length in meter now see this parameter which is important is known as specific rotation specific rotation and this constant and depends on nature of the substance now this can be written as equal to alpha by c into l right now we will define it now specific rotation can be defined as optical rotation per unit concentration per unit length of the polarimeter tube that is this one optical rotation per concentration per length right now this is the important part these are the reference books from which you should learn the stereochemistry from the beginning now first book is stereochemistry of organic compounds principles and application by dean asipuri stereochemistry of organic compounds by ernest l eliel last one is stereochemistry of carbon compounds by ernest l eliel now this is not available frequently and when necessary i will provide the screenshots and the book pictures so this much for today hope you like this do not forget to like share subscribe and comment